Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about one of the bigger mysteries of the 20th century, the Tunguska event. And in this video we're going to explore some of the recent discoveries, especially the ones from only a few weeks ago, with at least one recent discovery coming from a scientific team that may have actually finally solved what happened back in 1908. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now I wanted to start this video right here in Google Earth by trying to find where the Tunguska event happened. Now this was actually back in 1908 and until pretty much now we still kind of have no idea what really happened here. So the event happened somewhere in this area right here and I think it's actually in this boggy area that you see right here. And what's interesting about it is that even after basically over a hundred years since it happened, there are still quite clear indications of something major happening around this particular river that you see right here. I may have to cheat a little bit and look it up. And there we go. I was a little bit too far north. So this is essentially the Tunguska meteorite event, or technically just the Tunguska event, because we've never really recovered any meteorite from here. And this is why the mystery was created. For basically over a hundred years, the only real indication of anything actually happening here was the somewhat unusual clearing in the middle, along with a large number of trees toppled away from the center in a uh, relatively large area of about 50 by 50 kilometers or about 35 by 35 miles. And what's interesting is that even after about 110 years or 112 years now, you can still actually find some of the trees, especially the older trees, completely toppled down. So only the younger trees have been kind of regrowing in their stead. So we know that something major must have occurred here for all of this to actually look like this. But unfortunately, since the scientists didn't really get to this area until about 18 to 19 years after the event, and even then, except for a few photographs, they really didn't get to study the uh, area in a lot of detail, it's thus difficult for us to really determine what happened here, except for basically collecting some of these samples in the area and trying to use various modeling and computer simulations to try to estimate what may have caused all of this. So obviously there were a lot of different theories proposed and some of these ideas were a little bit too extreme, like for example, some scientists suggested that maybe this was a a chunk of antimatter that exploded in the atmosphere. Some scientists even proposed an actual black hole, and this was an article posted in Nature magazine back in 1970. But the thing is, uh, we now know that pretty much none of this is probably true. Mostly because a lot of scientists in the past 20 years have been returning here, collecting a lot of samples, studying them in a lot of detail, and discovering some really interesting things. And as you can probably guess, nothing extraordinary or anomalous happened here. And so in this video, I kind of wanted to cover some of the details we've discovered about this in the last 10 years or so, including the most recent analysis that used computer simulations to actually work out what very likely happened here. So first of all, the year is 1908. This area probably looked something like this, like you see in this aerial photo from only a few years ago. But then suddenly, in the early morning of June of 1908, there was a very unusual explosion that rocked the area that you see right here. This explosion was so powerful that its effects could actually be even felt all the way in Western Europe, and even the seismic detectors in the United States could actually feel the vibration created by this explosion. Now, the only other similar explosion was obviously the Chilabinx meteor that happened in 2013, but this one was much smaller and on a much smaller scale, both in terms of the explosion and the effects it had. Here in this particular video, you can actually see what this may have looked like, but obviously from a much smaller distance. So this explosion was extremely powerful, and it's very likely that the power itself was equivalent to about 3 to possibly even 30 megatons of power, equivalent to basically some of the bigger atomic bombs we've ever exploded here on the planet. The effects of this explosion were actually felt across a really large area, and even people hundreds of kilometers away from this explosion experienced basically shattered windows, and there were even reports from the local Evenki people that at least three hunters may have actually died as a result of being thrown against a tree, although these accounts were not really confirmed by anyone. But anyway, so the locals 
was a really cool painting I was able to find uh, right here, were very likely the only witnesses to this event in the vicinity, because these are the only people living in this area, and this is actually lucky because if this was a city, if this was a metropolitan area, the explosion would very likely destroy everything in the vicinity. And following the destruction even hundreds of kilometers away, Surprisingly, the skies around Europe were actually quite bright the following few nights. Now today we know that this was very likely because of all of the aerosols that were released during the explosion and were spread across the entire world, basically changing the color of the night skies for at least a few days, possibly even a few weeks. And even though back then the scientists obviously didn't really know why this is happening, today we know for a fact that this happened because of all of the ice particles that were deposited in the atmosphere, and this right here is a very similar effect. This is actually from a few decades ago from space shuttle launches that were actually investigated to cause very similar effects, glowing of the atmosphere due to all of the ice particles that were deposited by the space shuttle. This is actually known as a space shuttle glow. But now take this and multiply it by several thousand times to imagine what everyone around Earth probably saw back in 1908. There were also reports of various bluish lights across the night skies and of course really loud sounds and essentially an explosion. So all of these effects together today we know were probably caused by what's known as an air bolide but more specifically, something we refer to as an Earth-grazing asteroid or Earth-grazing meteorite. The most famous such event occurred back in 1860, here's a painting of someone actually witnessing it, and for the most part, they all happen in a very similar fashion. Essentially, it's a rock that ends up passing by really, really, really closely to Earth, essentially through the uh, lower atmosphere. It also often falls apart in the atmosphere, creating a huge explosion, but then, because its speed has not actually slowed down, it ends up leaving the planetary system and sort of returns back to where it came from. So these are Earth-grazing asteroids, and they do happen quite frequently. Although more often than not, we don't really get to witness them, mostly because they are either too small or uh, happen in areas where nobody is there to notice them. Now, for the most part, this is what we think happens. But why is it that we think so? Well, one of the main reasons is because we've never really recovered anything on the ground. There were no rocks, there were no actual pieces of, a, large pieces of asteroid. And for the most part, there were no actual craters. However, there was a suggestion that maybe the crater was actually this lake right here. There's a strange lake that some scientists suggested may be the sign of the rock that collided with the planet, but and up until now, and also from all of the recent studies, we were able to establish that this is probably not the case. One of the biggest sort of signs against this being the meteorite location is that the trees in the area around the lake seem really, really old. If there was an actual collision here, those trees would probably disappear as well. And so the facts here were that, well, there was no actual crater, there were no pieces of asteroid being recovered, and there was no signs of any kind of actual physical explosion on the ground. There were only signs of fire, which was most likely caused by something exploding in the atmosphere, and obviously a lot of trees that were toppled down away from the center where this explosion occurred. So in other words, it was very likely some sort of an aerial explosion, which is also what some of the uh, witnesses in the area were kind of describing as well. But what else have we recovered in the last few years? Well, first of all, some of the recent discoveries were in regards to the materials recovered in the various bogs in this area. Basically, back in 2013, these scientists did actually discover tiny granules that very likely originated in space. These were filled with things like nickel, which is a very common uh, material that's produced in meteorites. And all of these samples that were recovered from these bogs definitely indicated that something must have come from outer space and exploded right above this area. So now the question was, what was it? Was it a meteorite, a comet, or something else? And to study all of this, the scientists had to actually come up with several different models and simulations to try to investigate what could have possibly created these effects. And so the most recent study that just came out a few months ago essentially argues that what was most likely responsible for the explosion was a relatively large, approximately 200 meters in diameter, a metallic asteroid very similar to some of the other metallic asteroids we've discovered on the planet. And their reasoning is pretty simple. In general, there are three types of bodies that usually collide with our planet. Planet. There are either comets, which for the most part are made out of ice, a good example here would be Comet Haley that's predominantly made out of ice, 
And these objects, when they collide with planet Earth, they normally just kind of explode and evaporate completely. So if this type of a grazer passed through the upper atmosphere, it would very likely create a much larger explosion, and it would also most likely not even survive the passage through the atmosphere as described in the um, eyewitness accounts. So most of the theories agree that it was very likely not an ice type of an object, it was not a comet. It couldn't also be a rocky asteroid, simply because, once again, the density here would most likely create a much larger explosion and also would not actually leave the unusual trails that were observed by the eyewitnesses from a few hundred kilometers away. A typical rock, when it enters the atmosphere, doesn't actually have an ability to withstand the aerodynamic forces. It normally completely explodes in the upper atmosphere and sometimes reaches the lower atmosphere, but very rarely. So once again, this is probably not what happened here. A much more likely event was essentially an iron-based asteroid. These are very common on Earth as well, and we've found quite a lot of them. And it's not uncommon for iron asteroids to quite easily maintain their shape and essentially only evaporate when the temperature becomes really, really, really hot, which is exactly what they think happened. They believe that when it was passing through this area right here, which is basically the epicenter, the Tunguska asteroid itself most likely heated up to about 10,000 degrees Celsius and was creating this really, really large flame-like, or I guess you can call it sun-like object, that was so extremely hot that it set the entire forest underneath it on fire almost instantly. It only took like a second. This particular event was also elaborated by one of the eyewitnesses who mentioned that he was suddenly so extremely hot and felt so warm on the inside that he had to undress himself even though he was several hundred kilometers away from the actual epicenter of the explosion. And so what they're implying happened here was this really large plasma-like huge fireball that flew past this area right here really really fast at about 15 to maybe 20 or even higher kilometers per second eventually reaching speeds to leave planet earth but as it did so it was enough time for it to cause all of these effects we're observing the explosion the fire and all of the other atmospheric effects were observed for a few days afterwards all of this kind of makes sense and the computer models created by these scientists do kind of collaborate the story which also of course implies that this rock is probably somewhere out there orbiting around the sun and could one day be actually discovered once again if we can somehow calculate its orbit and discover what happened to it after all. And considering the sheer number of air bolides that do happen on Earth pretty much every year, here's a map from about 20 years of investigation by NASA, it's of course no surprise that no rock was ever recovered. A lot of asteroids never really make it to the surface of the planet and many of them do end up just grazing in the atmosphere and disappearing into the outer space once again. But even though we might never discover what really happened here, the important part here is to understand that these events are pretty frequent. Current estimates suggest that such events usually happen every 200 or so years on the planet and smaller events happen even more frequently. So it would be really prudent for us to try to understand how these events happen and to try to predict them and possibly prevent them from happening. Because like I mentioned before, if something like this happens around a metropolitan area, the amount of energy produced by this explosion would basically be equivalent to a typical nuclear bomb. So this is definitely something we need to be aware of and study in a little bit more detail. But I guess for now, well, looks like maybe we have kind of solved the mystery of Tunguska asteroid and we may have finally figured out why is it that we've never recovered anything major from this area. It's not the most exciting explanation, but honestly at this point it's better that we have closure rather than exciting explanation for an event that happened over 110 years ago. And I'm also certain that we'll have a lot more events to talk about in the future because these asteroids and these bolides are pretty common. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the Tunguska event and what most likely happened there. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe potentially support this channel Patreon, or help support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. On that note, thank you for watching, see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.